I was sent this tweet thread and told to look at some of the replies and the quote retweets. And this is an amazing experiment. It's talking about kids and empathy. And it does, um, it does originate as a TikTok video. In the video, these kids were given jelly or jello, if you're here in America, that was made with salt instead of sugar. And they watched how these five-year-olds reacted. The little girls literally, I mean, all of the kids, nobody liked this jelly, nobody. But the girls were like, oh my God. And it's like, hmm, it's good. But then their faces were like betraying them. And so at one point during this experiment, the adults were asking the kids if there is a time where little kids should lie or where people should lie to other folks. And one of the little girls was nudging another girl saying, it's never okay that to lie, say it's never. And so then the little girl said it's never, but it's clear that these little girls are lying to preserve the feelings of the adults. So this is a boy, he was given the same jelly and was asked the same question. And he was like, um, you should take this jelly back home. And the person was like, well, why do you say that? And he said, I told her it was not good because it's not good. So this little boy is not interested in protecting this person's feelings. He tasted it. He didn't like it. And he said, it's not good. And then um, the, per the questioner asked the question, well, why did you say that? And he said, because, he, because she can take it. So he knows and understands that <laughs> this person is an adult and this person will be able to accept the feedback. And he was not looking to um, mask what he felt about this jelly to protect that person's feelings. I've actually made this jelly for you. What they don't know is that the jelly has a secret ingredient. Oh man. Salt. <laughs> this task gives us insight into how children conceal emotions like disgust and show empathy. Yeah, it does smell good. Mm. It smells good. What do you think? Mm. <laughs> is it sometimes okay to tell a little lie? Never. A little one? Just say never, okay? Never. Five-year-olds are able to tell white lies to avoid hurting someone else's feelings. And girls are more likely to do this, as they may be more aware of social norms of politeness than boys. It's amazing. Do you like it? Like it? It's a bit salty, but I like salty. I felt sorry for her. Why? Because we don't really like her jelly. Now for the boys. So what do you think? How does it taste? Is it OK? Why is there salt in this? Do you think I should give it to the other kids then? Well, you, you can take it home. I told her it was not good. Why did you tell her that? Because it wasn't good. What about her feelings? She was okay with that. So now for some of the comments. Even those little girls have to think about others' feelings. God, we're tired. How is it possible that these five-year-old girls know and understand that they have to, like, manage their expectations or manage their behaviors and how they feel about things to protect other people? And these people are five years old. <laughs> um, KT says of the boy in blue, he says, um, he says she can really take that BS back to the house. Um, and then the little boy also said she was okay with that. Hello. Yes, we, we like how these little boys are acting. That's what we need to be teaching our girls. We, we have got to stop teaching our girls to swallow some salt, swallow some BS, swallow some poop in order to, and smile about it, even though we clearly don't like it. We have got to tell women and girls that it is perfectly fine to speak about what you like and don't like without like trying to massage their feelings. We should not be swallowing salt or BS for other people's feelings. Do says, females lie and put on a front to not hurt feelings. Males tell you how it is. And to this point, I mean, he's telling the truth. Deuce is telling the truth. At some point, we have got to stop socializing women and girls to be like this. This is a societal thing. 
um, a cat like that says, we should probably teach girls to be a lot less empathetic, right? And Du says, personally, I think one of the most empathetic things you can do is telling someone a hard truth. So it sounds like, yes, Deuce wants women and girls to speak more plainly. And I really want women and girls to speak more plainly. Roulette says, girls are conditioned from birth to be agreeable and actively discouraged to not be, um, while boys are conditioned that saying whatever they please is not only acceptable, but encouraged. Fixed it for you. Arlie says, because women are socialized to act this way, being blunt as a woman means you're rude and bitter. It also means you get labeled as aggressive or masculine. Um, so for, for a woman, he says, bet you would call a woman rude if she told it how it is. And we really would get, um, we would get disparaged and called all of these different things for speaking plainly. I know being assertive gets um, equated to being aggressive. I am an assertive woman. I speak plainly. So people can say, you know, tell the hard truth, but they are really not ready for when women and girls start speaking plainly. Some of the quote retweets, small girls are socialized to accept their own discomfort, even disgust in the name of making other people feel good. You can communicate disinterest in a kind way. There is no need to lie about your boundaries because someone else might be unhappy about them. Yikes. Anti-evil bar activist says, the fact that it is framed as being about empathy when it actually shows that girls are socialized from a young age to put up with BS and suffer in silence. The boys didn't fail at empathy because they correctly assessed that people can handle the truth. Udokama's Bebe says, Girls are conditioned to be empathetic and considerate at the expense of honesty. Boys are taught to be direct um, at the cost of empathy. This is why girls downplay or minimize abusive behavior so as to avoid conflict or upsetting the abuser. We need to unlearn this. And then this person says, it's really kind of wild that society raises girls to protect others' feelings at the expense of their own. And then Mingu says, as always, as always said, Men lack basic feelings like empathy due to how they're raised. Meanwhile, girls are taught to suck it up no matter what is said to them from the age of three. This was an amazing experiment, very short to the point. And I think that we really do need to do better about our girls, about not making them swallow down their disgust to hurt, to help other people's feelings or to like lie to folks. We, we got to do better by our girls. Jo let me know what you think about this one. Don't forget to like, comment, and share. Okay, so this woman down here named Raj V says, I was talking to a female friend and she was telling me how lonely it is for her to be working with only men in her team because they all maintain a respectful distance from her as they don't want to come off as creeps, not realizing it's completely isolating. Okay, so there's already so many things that are wrong with this because at this particular point, people are acting like they don't know the difference between treating people like professionals and like certain things are crossing the line. So that's already irritating. But Clifton took this screenshot and said, respecting women is the new misogyny. <sighs> so that that's also irritating because obviously that's their stance. They think that, you know, that is what they're doing is simply being respectful when it's really not is being unprofessional, but whatever. Anyways, Courtney um, retweeted it and said, this is men unable to discern what is or is not creepy. And they're unable to know if they are or are not creeps. That's disturbing. And, you know, this all started to come about because of Me Too, and I just just need to stay away from women altogether because otherwise I'm going to get in trouble at HR, and I'm going to get fired or whatever. I'm going to get canceled, and this new woke situation means that we just can't talk to each other. And it, it's just like, that's so overly simplistic or acting like children because what some of these people act like is just a simple compliment. They're just like, Betty came in today and she's wearing a blue dress. Oh, Betty, that dress is nice. Or, oh, Betty, that's a nice color. 
versus Betty, I would love to bend you over because that dress is banging and it makes your butt look good. Like there is <laughs> a certain way that you can talk to people, but people were acting like women were just going up to HR and just railing on men simply for speaking and saying hello or acting like a normal human. And that's obviously not what women were talking about. Some of the comments. Yo, they put up signs where I work saying, don't say sh to, to the women, it's actual harassment. Like, okay, got it. It's what y'all asked for. And it's just like, there is zero to 100 and they can't even like focus somewhere in the middle with just being a normal human and treat women with respect. But that's what um, Courtney said. Thanks for proving the point of my original tweet. And the tweet she was talking about what is I like, are they unable to discern how to talk to women? Courtney is not the type that goes back and forth with people. Um, he said, I'd be interested to know how it has proven the point. She did not respond. She doesn't go back and forth with these men. New York City sucks says, it's okay, bro. She's a rad femme. She'll never be happy with men. Keep yourself safe and keep your head up. Joey Overby says, or keeping an overly safe distance so they are never accused of anything, leading her on, etc. Fear of simply saying the wrong thing, especially when things are so quickly changing on what's acceptable, what's a joke, etc. has likely paralyzed a lot of men. Also, she could just be a terrible person, smell bad, etc. I think it's sad we all have to walk on eggshells now for a great variety of situations. And yeah, we do, I, I guess is walking on eggshells because some of the jokes or some of the commentary with like grape, grape jokes were funny. Um, talking about women's bodies seemed acceptable. Like some of these people don't simply know how to talk to women. And if you have to stay away completely to not say any of this unacceptable things, then yes, I honestly think it's better. This one particular person might feel isolated or whatever, but for the vast majority of us, we don't want to be exualized in the, the workplace. And if people can't learn the difference between being professional and being at work and talking with some sense, then yes, maybe they should just stay away. Now to this tweet thread, did feminism destroy women? <laughs> Look at this meme. Um, what what built the West? These women, you know, looking all hearty, nostalgic. And then what destroyed the West? These women, like they're feminists, they want some rights. Women unite. That is what destroyed the West. Then he made a poll. Was feminism a net positive? He got 907 votes. 29% said feminism was a net positive. 71% said no, feminism was not a net positive. So that just goes to show who his who's in his network. And I'm not going to belabor the the point by looking in his commentary except for this one screenshot just to just to give you a small snippet. Feminism was created by the government to get women to pay taxes and join the workforce. That's why feminism was created, not women needing to control their own lives because they were being treated like property and had no say in anything and could be graped and um, have DV in the home and all of that. No, that's not why women wanted to join the workforce. It was because of the government. And so the same man, the art of purpose says it's all about money. Yes, because women needed that financial stability and independence to be able to leave when situations sucked because women weren't free autonomous humans, they were the property of men. And so this person says, yes, it's about women being able to make their own money by utilizing their labor in an environment which rewards them for it. And so that is what feminism did. It allowed women to be able to control our own lives. So I just wanted to give you a snippet into what some of these men were talking about. But now we're going to go to the feminist side of things because a feminist retweeted it. So Rap Fem Future says to the question, did feminism destroy women? And she said, no, men did. Feminism is a reaction to your misogyny. We don't have to put up with it and we won't. And so what men see as destroying the West is basically destroying their, their kingdoms. They got to 
lord over women within their own little kingdom. And now women are fully autonomous and we're not oppressed simply by being born with a uterus. We can go to work, we can control ourselves. And that is really making some of these men fail and flail. And then they are creating memes and saying that feminism is the problem. Jen says, only the worst men feel threatened by real feminism because they know the rights feminists fought to secure for women are the reason women can choose better men than them. Right. So not all men get a woman simply because women need to be attached to a man. They actually have to be decent humans. Alethea says, feminism destroyed men's unreasonable control over women. Men are still mad about it and they can die mad. Um, Prantic says feminism gave women rights and um, lit. Okay, Prantic is missing a few words, but he's saying feminism gave women rights and the ability to live a life with dignity. And men want to take this away from women. That is what I'm getting from Prantic. So Natasha says, notice they use a beautiful painting that emits nostalgia and not a picture from actual recent history showing the um, poverty and violent and alcoholic men that women and children couldn't escape. And Lisa just says, I'm growing tired of their constant whining and crying. Um, Madzia says, men know they hold no real value. So they base their entire existence on destroying, humiliating, and endangering women. The longer I'm feminist, the longer I find it too exhausting, too exhausting to argue with men about our right to exist. Yes, we have the right to exist. We have the right to own our own body without asking them for it. We have so many rights that women fought for. And financial and reproductive freedoms um, are things that feminists fought and won. And women of right now are not going to let us go backwards. We're going to fight like hell to make sure that women still have the rights to our own bodies and to be free from oppression and free from the ownership of a man. Anyways, let me know what you think about these two tweet threads. Join the conversation. Don't forget to like, comment, and share.